variations and have the rate of rare things, but the number of rare things was pretty big. So what happens in practice is this. I don't know if you've ever had the misfortune of being in a hospital or having one of your family members in the hospital, but typically the scenario is you go in and of course the intern, we call the intern in America, I guess here you call them registrars. Uh, or registrars, we'll take care of this thing, do something simple. But of course, they don't know what it is and they get the guy, you know, love them, the supervisor will come in, house surgeons, what we call senior residents. And they can't understand, they can't figure out what's going on. Of course, they can go ask the attention of the what you guys call the specialist. The guy will be right here, and he'll actually know what's going on. So we see it And why is that, of course? Well, because uh, when it comes to something that's uh, <laughs> don't read that. So the guy comes in, doctor, my head hurt, we'll have an error in my head. And then you see that, of course, he's a really smart student, right? <coughs> but I don't think you do because uh, research shows that the uh, probability of getting an error in your head is really small. So I don't think you got an error in your head. So, uh, of course, this is pretty easy to diagnose. But what if there wasn't something quite so obvious? So then who would you want as to see you? Would you want the really genius Julian Hauser or would you want the marvelous love you got? Most people, if you have a life and threatening situation, would probably want the the older guy, because he actually seen the rare condition. But what if we were able to do this? Go back. What if we were able to get this guy's smart to this guy's experience level? That's what you wanted. What you want to be able to do is graduate from medical school or after you finish your internship. You want to be able to graduate a guy with this much mental flexibility, innovation, you know, with this guy's experience, you can combine it to it, and that'd be great, wouldn't it? So that's what the idea of the con this concept is, really. It's all it is. Boils down to. Boils down to: Can we capture patient cases? Can we simulate the examination process in order to uh, teach student uh, the cases? And then can we get the students to see thousands and thousands and thousands of patients before they graduate? So conceivably, we could do that. Uh, Jason uh, touched on one thing I think it's really, really common uh, when it comes to catching the patient cases. Clinicians are really, really um, jealous of their patients. You know, you go in, it's your patient. You know, in other words, it's my, it's my patient, and I can show my patient. Maybe, first of all, because it's confidential, anyway, right? You go in to see a doctor, it's your, that's confidential stuff. They talk about patient relationships, sacred. So there's a lot of, uh, Resistance sometimes, even sharing something as anonymous as a picture of your liver. Oh, you know, I got, I got an image of this really cool liver. It's my image. I want to keep the image. I want to keep the information. And, uh, uh, and that's one of the that's one of the challenges in this case. Uh, the other thing is the simulation of the exam process. We don't teach how to examine people. So I'm going to go over that. We cram students' minds with lots of information, and we kind of like want them to just kind of like, because they're smart people, figure out how to do it themselves. And I guess that's what a lot of educational programs are, right? You teach the you teach the language, for example, and then you, if you're smart enough, you can kind of figure out how to apply it and use it in the program. So we do the same thing with students in the hospital. They kind of learn by observation. There isn't anything that actually teaches them how to do it. Which is, I think, a problem sometimes because um, they don't always catch on. But this is basically the examination problem. It's quite simple and applies to every single uh, clinical setting, really. In every specialty. <coughs> you walk in and you say, I got an error on my head. And uh, the doctor asks you some questions. You know, how old are you? Have you ever, have you ever had an error in your head before? You know, this is the first time you've got an error in your head. Um, and then you run some findings, you know. In this case, look at the patient. Yep, you got an error in your head. Um, and you make a diagnosis. And, uh, and then you come up with a treatment plan. That's really it in a nutshell. Seems really simple. Of course, it gets more complicated than that because um, when you come in, the very first thing you do is find out what's wrong with the patient, what, what's the patient experiencing. The very first thing I try to teach students to do, they don't know how to do it, is is it normal or is it abnormal? Patients come in all the time and say they have something, and I go, yeah, that's normal. Yeah. Now, 
I'm walking in, I'm talking, I'm too up, and yeah, well, that's, that's normal. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to ask questions about the patient, you get information from them. In the course of getting your information, you have to determine once again if it's uh, bad or not. That would do. Uh, and in the course of that, if it is bad, that's the first thing to do, to find if it's bad. And if it is bad, then in your mind, you've got, this is all things that can be. A list of things that could be. And then based upon that list of things in your mind that it could be, you start asking more questions to start limiting. And then, of course, this next step after that is you run tests. You run tests to limit the things that could be. Uh, and then, of course, in the test, you got to, once again, you come back with a test, is it normal? Is it abnormal? If it's abnormal, what, what could it be? And, uh, and then it's a reiterative process. So you run more tests, get more history, until you finally find the one thing, the one subset, that, the one diagnosis that's in a subset that fits everybody else subset. Right? Um, so then you come up with a diagnosis. The one thing that could be the most likely cause that's consistent with all the symptoms and the history, the test findings. And of course, in the management plan, it's quite simple, based upon the history and the current on the diagnosis. So that's pretty straightforward. So what are the so if I'm one of the things that's difficult for clinicians, especially after you have a lot of training, is trying to figure out what is it I actually do. And uh, the school of medicine has had the same problem. As you get experts, and you ask them, well, what is it? You actually they can't figure out what they do. Uh, but uh, I've thought about it a lot, and I think what we do actually is we have a whole list of uh, these sets of data, I guess, and memorized uh, history questions, uh, test uh, databases, diagnoses, differentials, and management plans in our head. And this is what I was trying to reproduce in the virtual clinic. So these are the components we've worked on, or we are working on. Uh, and each one of these has, of course, its own ontology. Uh, and there's several hundred for each one of these. Fairly limited. Only about maybe a thousand per database. Not too bad. However, one of the things that, uh, one of the great things about optometry, or I, I guess medicine in general, a lot of the tests that we run, we quantify them. Right, right? <coughs> the numbers. Uh, their attributes and there's normal ranges and there's outside the range and spotter and a lot of it in the vision care is, is uh, optometry, it's uh, modifiable stuff, which is easy to do, you can memorize that. One of the hard things to do though is to, is to try and tell students or patients things that you're looking at. Like, you know, during the exam sometimes uh, patients will want to know, typically engineers will want to know, what is it you're looking for? So it's really quick, it's easy to tell what you're looking, looking for if it's something tests. Well, I'm measuring this specifically, I'm measuring this specifically. But when I'm actually just looking at their eyes and they say, what are you doing? What are you looking for? What are you doing now? They don't know what I'm doing. I'm just looking at your eyes. I'm just looking for any abnormalities. It's not, it's not very well defined. And so early on in this concept, I realized, well, the images are really key. In other words, how you uh, interpret what you're seeing is actually very hard to quantify, and I realized that was going to be one of the key components of it. Uh, and so as we started working on that first, and that's what Gavin was in for, the image library was going to be key. Um, like Jason has, has uh, stated, um, there are vibrations of normal. Uh, sometimes you have tissues that when they get insulted by anything are going to react the same way. It doesn't really matter if it's a virus, bacteria, trauma, or, or, or social intervention, they're going to react the same way. So there are all these different diseases that look and manifest the same way. Um, sometimes you have different, the same disease but manifest differently in different people, with different neurological systems, or because it's just uh, maybe a more virulent uh, case. And of course, the last thing that makes it complicated is the course of the disease. Um, some diseases are like people, they look differently, but kind of the same, but the way you look when you're five years old is not the same way you can look when you're 75 years old. Uh, 
uh, we kind of recognize you, maybe that's going to be a little bit different. So of course it changes. So you have to be able to recognize this is the old case, this is the brand new case, this is the early case. So that's these are all things that happen after you've seen lots and lots of cases. So the idea there is then can we capture the images and can we organize them so that in a logical way so that students can actually learn from them. So instead of having to wait 20 years since we've seen a uh, thousand cases of this particular disorder, you can actually see it all in place. Now, um, and we've organized the images. That's one of the things that like Jason said we've had to struggle with. It's like almost like a design process. And how we're going to have, how, what our hierarchies we're going to use, and how we're going to name these things, what symptoms we're going to use. And those are the basic ones right there on the top that we came up with. Uh, anatomy, diagnosis, etiology, spelled in American way, the descriptive signs and diagnostic signs. And what I mean by descriptive signs and diagnostic signs is there are certain, um, there are certain uh, looks that tissues have when something happens. And so when you have diagnostic signs, you recognize that it's repeating patterns of a certain look. So it's a diagnosis because you know something's happened. A particular things happen. If you don't have any idea what's going on, then you just have to describe it. I've got a weird looking thing over here. Um, and of course, we also have to uh, keep track of the origin of the equipment, any treatments, uh, any particular information of the case. So these are the idea of the image library is nothing unique. So in other words, everybody has them. And this is what you typically people have. Everybody, every clinician in the world will have images. And it's something simple like the image and the name on it. So, yeah. Whether it's on the lid, the lens, or whether it's in the cornea, in front of the eye, infection, or inside the eye. One of the great things about optometry is uh, we don't have to have uh, CAT scans or x-rays, right? They were the tissues are mostly transparent. So most of our images were just photographs. You can see everything all the way from the, from the front. You know, the cornea is clear. The lens is clear. The other thing, of course, the regular tissues there in the front of the eye, the lids, and then the uh, back of the eye. That's kind of good. So it makes it easier to have images generate images. Uh, like I said, it's nothing new. <clears throat> We've been doing it for many, many, many years. Textbooks have it. Uh, one of the things about textbooks, of course, is you have a book, 500 pages, with a thousand diseases. You're lucky to have one picture of the disorder. And of course, when you have the picture of the disorder, what typically happens is you have the most dramatic case. Because doctors like to compete with their the images. Most dramatic case of this thing. So, so you have this huge, you know, dramatic picture. But it doesn't really help the students out, does it? Because they're never going to see that dramatic case. What they're going to see is a really early subtle case. But it doesn't really help them at all. So the image is really almost useless as far as the textbook is concerned. Um, clinical photo documentation. In our clinic, we have about 50,000 images that are just images. It's like what I showed you there. Um, but they haven't been documented. There's no organization to them. They're just part of the patient record. Um, we use them for teaching. For uh, and, there, and there's even the data, the uh, internet, the database that Jason brought up. There was one from the Atlas of Ophthalmology because this is a recognized problem. But even the atlases that are out there are just listing listing of images. And there's no real organization. One of the great things about um, our library, hopefully, if it gets to get work, is that you'll be able to pull it out because of what we have at the library. You'll be able to pull it out and say, I want all the diseases having to do with this particular part of the eye. You know, I've seen something weird in the coin of stroma. I want a picture, I want to see you know, 50 pictures of different things that could be. So, like, so it's a diagnostic tool. Um, or you could say, no, I know the diagnosis. I want to see whether this disorder, how it looks early on, or not. I'm doing research. 
early on or lay on onset. So I want all the pigments to lose one particular disorder. I want the moment to 500 and pigments of that one particular disorder. Um, or I want to see, sometimes in medicine, uh, we don't always get things right. Sometimes we have two different names for the same disorder. So I want to see things that look the same, same sign, the same uh, diagnostic signs. Uh, and I'm going to compare it to it. And maybe find out which happens quite often. Oh, few. Well, we've been calling two different things, but actually the same disorder. Maybe two different stages of the same disorder. So for, for research purposes, it's a good correct tool. But you only do that. You only can do that if you have the image in front of you. Okay. And that's kind of a joke, but that's uh, if this thing is developed to the ultimate stage, uh, I think in the future you can have not only be using this virtual clinic as a teaching tool, diagnostic aid, but actually, conceivably, you can have to take notes and that can do the same thing for the exam. Okay. I like the artistic uh, condition of the surgery. It's not very athletic with the body, but kind of brainy looking brain. <laughs> anyway, that's it on mine. Specific for us, and we had to modify it somewhat. Uh, so we use that just because it's well recognized. Anatomy, just uh, use regular anatomy. It is pretty specific, although we have the, I guess, the flexibility, I guess, of adding more small, small structures to move in. Did you create your own? Yeah, yeah, depending on for that. And then, um, it was kind of like So that's the sort of the stage where we have annotated all your results, all your images, which are uh, set up ontology in some of your own choosing. Right, right. Then what? Then the next 
uh, thing is to try to get people to collect the images, right? You know, we'll try to, we have this as an open source, the idea is to try to get everyone to input the images. Oh, sure, sure. But one, let us suppose we reach a stage where That's done. images have been contributed and then paid. And okay. what's the next step? Mm -hmm. How do you use it? How do you, oh, yeah, yeah. You're using it by, uh, one thing you can do for it is, for example, the, the teaching aspect. Uh, the young clinician sees something, doesn't recognize what it is, but at least knows that it's a retinal problem, because it's in the retina. So they, they would input uh, retinal vasculature, you know, and then it would, all the images of retinal vasculature with the diagnosis would be attached to the image. So basically, a matter of matching, right? Just like in the grade school. What in it, what how does my patient look? What image is it is it does it fit? Or what is the closest thing? Now if I find something that's close, I select that thing and then I said, Oh show me examples of this particular image. <laughs> and then it shows me a range of values. No, it's a rare So it makes it more comfortable. My patients no, look just right. like it looks like this. Well, this, and this is well. so now yeah, that's that's that. And the other application too was for research purposes, like I, like I mentioned. Was was, uh, some of our people in our department focuses on one particular subpart of the well, the music, music. Uh, So they could just be interested in looking at uh, one particular disorder and looking at lots and lots of images and studies. But uh, given that the uh, retinal photograph tend to be so standard. Isn't that very amenable to kind of image processing that might help you get some standardized derivative indices, say, of uh, vascular flare in and therefore you know you're sitting on a wealth of images. Right. Is there a way other than manual annotation that you could use to maybe you know, to bring bring to life? Sure, I'm sure that one of the things that we realized wasn't on the should make it the more we look into it, the more we realize the same. The more we realize 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 no, we don't do that. Yeah. 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 I, I know the person you talked to about that person. Yeah, I'd be glad. That's my reason why we came here. To, 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 uh, I'm sure it just it sounds to me like you've done everything, but maybe a decade earlier or something that we were looking at. Yeah. 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 That thought is um, might be a little bit. Away from the future, that's yeah, so, because my screen has just um, an underlying model on the high, an underlying model of the first two things, and that could actually affect the characteristics of the model and it's common to the theory. Yeah, that's what Jason, that's what his uh, underpunch is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's not there yet, but yeah, yeah, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't change. Yes, I do. I didn't, haven't changed anything in that nature. <laughs> okay, well, I'll start. Okay, I'll, I'll start. I'll try to. It will do Friday. Cool. We'll be coming to the free. Okay. Um, if we get it going, I'm using check data, which uh, is has the garbage up to prove any of the content of what we can do. 
uh, connected to the town or district and um, I've got an experience in street and day traders and the trend. Um, the you can spread an image database and you can move things on it. Before you get to an annotated image, you have to define you have to define ontologies which are validated if syntactically correct. And you have different ontologies and applied to English that same image. A part of which can you can different get it from different perspectives. Um, there's some talk about different variants and terms. Now I handle that by redirection. Now, yes, you can sometimes appropriate to get the different terms to be recognized. Officially, everyone can use different terms and the same thing. But sometimes, if it's colloquial, you don't do that, or you want to be able to do it quite quickly. So my system allows you to use a term and redirect it to a more official term. The whole idea of having a, a, a standard ontology that when you go searching for things, you can search using standard terms. Even if the clinician uses a different term to put in the data, the search will still find it using standard terms. And he can still find it using his term to get the same thing. And let's see, what's in the three direction? Um, uh, that's uh, that, that's right. The we would apply the tags to not only the whole image, but also parts of the image. Parts of the image. So you can search for things. If you know the image has got these, <coughs> you can search for what's on that basis. Um, the image doesn't have a search, but it's um, also a search. Now, the other thing, too, is you can have attributes that can give values, like the dilation of pupil. You can actually record that on the image. The look at images or dilation is very good for the amount. So I'm searching what are villages, searching images on semantic concepts. The system will know to present images to allow you to think of different ways and store them and develop quite complex searches without having to do SQL. Um, Okay, that's your cover. Okay, the, the generator of HTML, the background of it, is that the program itself will generate HTML and SVG from the image put in with other files which have the tag information. So that you may that with the web page that can be accessed anywhere. And you get a set of web pages that can be moved. This is a prototype, so it just produces them. And, and, and the final one will be a prop web set with a database and prop application. But at the moment, it has to use HTML pages, and the same logic will go into the final system. And you've got um, two things. One is the Aaron had an image. Uh, oh, what do you <laughs> so you will have an image of what you No, I won't. I think people will get it. Um, yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. When you show an annotated image, you see an image which will go and underneath it information which is relevant to the whole image.
Everyone on the internet can see. Remember, one, one time I was working at a data bank, and um, I've been out for about 20 hours, and I had to add to the paper cash on, on, on the um, printer because otherwise it would crunch up. So who was being paid a higher rate to add to the paper for a printer? Yes, stand over there. <laughs> Oh, do you want you to be closer? Oh, All okay. can, can right, can you hold it? And that, and I'll, yeah, come over here so you're not blocking the way. Okay, if you hold it. If it isn't my boss, he's good for me to be in work. What's happening here? I'm going to press it. Okay. Uh -oh. <coughs> no, that's clever. I can see why you're thinking. <laughs> so that's a camera phone. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is the light light refracting to the window? So move it, move it to the other side. If you move it to that side, you could light coming off the window. Perhaps it's easier just to see from here. Get everyone to come up and have a look. Yeah, here, if you want to see. Or <laughs> well, maybe you should. You, you so it's just a camera. The light the window is better on there. I think we're small enough that people that want to see can just gather around. I, I joke about this. It's going to be the best. Yeah, role. so if you want to have a look, you can come a bit closer or something like that. Okay, well, I can show if you so go over here. Come over here again. If I click on there, that freezes, so I can move down to here. I can then freeze that. So you can see both of the same screen the same time. So you can compare two things at the same point. It is just testing, so don't read too much of the words. Now, if I can figure out how to move the pointers to. Get my glasses. Now, I had a slight mistake for that. I was trying to add new stuff that didn't quite work out. And then, ah, that's what I mean. Okay. <coughs> that's come up with more information. Um, that's a short description. That's a tag, which could be ICD 9 code or something. Now if we go down to see this one, you see it's got two values that have been given to it. In this case, the values are not very meaningful, but you can imagine that you're describing something and you say this has got green and red or some other things. Now, not shown here, but I can actually get hyperlinks and pictures in there. So this tiny area here, I could actually get a bigger picture of that area inside this, this toolkit. And down here, um, you can get more information which relates to the whole area. Now, um, for documents, I'll show you one document which will be converted to a an actual web page, but before I go into, into that, um, I have two classes of documents. Um, define the file in the system. One's called an explain file. An explain file is an explain something that's global. Like, what's the catalog? So you might have an explain file called cataract or something like the more sophisticated name. If you innocently describe what is a cataract. But if you have 
um, several images relating to a patient, you might, work, might want to have notes about that patient in that session. So you'd have notes of, in this session for Mr. Smith, or some arbitrary number to make it confidential, there's common information. So all the images in the directory of the name of that will share that information, and you could refer to it here, so you're not constantly cutting and pasting stuff. Um, that's called the node is expensive. Don't worry about the technology. If you use it, you know it's you know. The basic concept is you have documents that are global and documents that are specific to the situation that can be shared by various um, images. Uh, what are the oh, I'll come back to it. Okay, so if I just move to here. Okay. Now this uh, is quite crude at the moment, but it, we can add more sophistication data in terms of raw matter and stuff. But the key concept is that you don't need to be in the inside HTML or markup. All you need to do is to define a style which I call a vertex that system knows. Just because you outline something in style, say, it's em em emphasize of life, you say it's a vertex, you can change it, and you don't like it. And this is will take that, convert it into a, a logical ID, and look at up in the intelligent database to see whether the URL is associated with it. Now, if, if it's JSON, JSON might be in with one name, but in here, you, you can't read it. In here, I've mentioned in four different ways, like Jason, Dr. Tafara, whatever name, or, or Jason PhD, can all be redirected. So if you get any, you get a picture of what Jason now sees in this person. Don't get old. I'm actually here in this group, I said, you click on the it, it can come up with, that's a hyperlink that's generated. Now, you don't need to know about hyperlinks. All you need to do is to mark the phrase and it'll look at the database. Now, you can redirect several phrases to the same thing. I won't try and show, <laughs> show up, but if anyone interested, I can. I can. Um, Okay, maybe I'll do it on this board. Okay, I'm not going to try and write a full one just to give you an idea. Because you might have Jason. And they use a tilde. Right? They say reader in it. Do something like that. U O A. I mean, obviously, it would be more simple than that. If you're thinking of my Jason here, we might have um, Dr. Jason, and that would go into that as well. So, yeah, you have a file in the same directory as a document to match the phrase that it comes up with to the phrase in the ontology. Now, just a little bit, ontology has several levels. Um, like, I mean, a flavor, this is not actually how you do it, this could be a flavor. But you might have um, ICD9 364 1 3. Okay, that's ontology, so you tag it with that. Now, now I think I found some of the syntax, just with the flavor of it, the tool tip. The same with that on the same line, you could say long items, whatever the term is. So the tool tip, which you find this to, which says plunge items in the, the tool tip. You click on 
which was coded, and it's also found underneath it a URL. Not again, actually, white URL. This is like actually URL, and that URL uh, could either be hyphen to check on in the toolkit or appear in the toolkit. Uh, I have quite an option to do, uh, to do either way. Um, now, currently in this program, the stand main program, it validates everything, creates the action of every time to run. That doesn't fail. It's fine for a prototype, but it's fair. Well, what I plan to do uh, in the final thing is actually have a server. It's a server in front of the database. And on, the, on your screen, you can access it on the on the web browser. And you'll be able to retain stuff here in the database, and you have access control to that. If Jason's working with something, he's not really showing on, you'll just can see it. And then it will be moved, uh, published or moved in different areas. It's the whole stuff. Some of the ideas here is that I'm coming with, with um, the stuff that's working on the And what I'm going to And the other aspect for that plan is, at the moment, we've covered that the interview system and we can capture it. Later on, we'll be able to arrange packages of images that they can refer to. And different images in different That's getting next to the to detail. So I think that's the next stage I'll stop. So that gives the last question to me and the other two. Do you want to put the hands on a piece of 
loading a certain image and then looking at the neighbor, the semantic neighbor of this image, based upon the relationship that the particular image has with other images on the basis of the snapping to the very supposed. So what's the what's the vision there? Well, I've seen systems ready on the shelf, as it were, in which you put in your images and your annotation, and then you have a kind of rough environment. You have your image at the center linked to three or four other images floating about. But right. those four images are based upon the criteria that you can switch on or off. Right. So, you know, you can, you can cluster, it's a question of clustering. You know. Right. So you can cluster images, I don't know, by rate of progression, by you know, other diseases that those cases have, by that is pathology, of course. Right. So you, you can really change the way that the neighborhoods yeah. alter based upon certain criteria. Uh, I, 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 I envision it being like a relational, relational database where you can specify uh, what you want. Either as narrow or as broad as you want, right? So you either have an anatomy or sub anatomy, and then uh, you know, like, uh, I want to see all the retinal images, I want to see all the retinal vascular images, I want to see all the retinal vascular images that are hemorrhaging, and you never can scope down to just that particular entity. That's the way I'm using it. But. Okay. Uh, the two way I can find a hand thing there is one using usage directed with all high. Can put together as images that are related to the words. So you can strike it as a class, you might have six images of cash rates and five or sources. These are three clear images of cash rates. One of the cash rates is probably more important, and two are not cash rates. They can do it. That is quite ready to be defined in exactly the XML. The second one is because we, we know the attributes of the, of the image. And part of the image, you can search the attributes. It just says no about that. It can select or no. Um, they already have had it, had it either seen. A seen might be images that are related to conditions that need to be treated urgently. They might have several conditions, like simple attributes need to be in place. Some may have certain values and you can assign weighting to that. So that would allow the ranking of images um, to rank in terms of how close to that next thing. And then it would say, give you the 10, the 10 how many there are, and then you can find the first two more dimensions. And it, it might say, give you the first 10 and you can scroll through more. And then you click on the one you want them to have a look at. So are these resources going to be in the public domain or what sort of access is going to be provided? The, 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 the idea for access will be uh, multi level because before he puts in something, um, he may be happy for Jason to have a look at, but it's not ready even for his group because he hasn't read the same context and to expose it to something. It's really quite different. So, and then when he's ready, he might say the wider group of colleagues can have a look at it, comment on it, and then it might be to departments and it might be to. Do this may stay there, where they say, okay, this is good enough, this is appropriate to go public, and then it goes go, go, go to public. And I mentioned this to about peer review, is that um, our whole head's gone, so he can do it. But if a student is PhD, um, then there's some also I feel would have to enable him then to move from their private to something more public, so there's a kind of peer review process that could be built into it. It could also be used for sharing information with the department, um, to have interesting cases, and that could lead to producing a scientific paper. Now, it's not going to produce a scientific paper for you, but it could help you build up what you can for later on, you could get e-publishing facilities that get to publish the software with me. Thank you. But it is making a comment, Andre. Uh, Help me out. Isn't this what PMR is in that system? I mean, we will almost certainly end up linking it into 
lot of talk to this. Uh, this <coughs> that point, that's repeating the modern stuff. Yeah, and so the identity of the remainder of the DNR is not just so I think tomorrow you see people talking about some other sort of image annotation storing just the annotation and the amount to add it to the source search of the pool. It's going to give us very much. I think it's not important to see. I just wrote, I, obviously one of the ideas I've had is that if images come in with metadata, there's no reason why we couldn't sort of operate in our system that has to have a track and have one of them. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, is uh, some of these operations in the image, I think I agree, are this uh, stuff of stuff merging in the image and are ranging into like the email and the images? So I love, I don't know, we couldn't quite catch it. The part of the image are the dogs in the image. That you can annotate. Uh, but in these subregions of the zones in the image are rising to a structure. So it needs to be to the good end of the image. So it could, could be to find a region of the image. Hello? Yeah. I don't know. 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 But this is, I think, our reason why I can generate that from there. If it's an interest, it automatically take that in and then, and then apply it to my system. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you.